Hello and welcome to this hopefully short video about setting up Linux Mint uh, for various courses at Seneca College, uh, primarily probably OPS 445. So we're going to walk you through the steps of setting this up with VirtualBox. Let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is VirtualBox installed on your local machine. If it's a laptop or a desktop, it doesn't matter. Right here I see uh, I'm looking at my apps at Seneca Polytechnic and I'm just looking at the version of VirtualBox that is installed on our lab machines on campus. This is VirtualBox 7.0.18. If at all possible, you should try to match this version with the one that you're installing on your machine. When I go to the VirtualBox webpage over here, uh, and by getting there, I just did a quick you know, search with a DuckDuckGo or whatever. Um, I can see that I can install VirtualBox 7.0. The actual version that they have is 7.0.20. I'm going to assume that that's fine. So you will find instructions for installing on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. You should go ahead and do that. Once you get that done, the next thing that you will need to find is a version of Linux Mint. Again, use your favorite web, web search tool, uh, find Linux Mint, go to download. You're gonna have find different versions here. Uh, I always just choose the first one. This is, this just sets up sort of the uh, desktop interface. It doesn't matter too much. We will click download over here and you will need to make sure that you are installing the ISO file and not any other kind of file, okay? so choose one of these links to download the ISO file, wait for that to finish. The next thing that you need and the final thing that you're gonna need is some sort of drive to host your virtual machine. I recommend that you have an external SSD so that you can plug your SSD into one of our lab machines on campus and hopefully have everything work. Okay, so I have my Kingston SSD plugged in right now. I can see it when I look it up. Everything's good to go. So once you have those three parts, you can continue with the rest of these instructions. Okay, moving on. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you can launch virtual machine, or virtual box rather. Okay, you should be able to see something like this. Uh, once you see this screen, make sure you go to new over here. The first thing to set up is the name of your new virtual machine. I'm going to go with Linux Mint or something like that. The folder where we're going to be installing to is going to be the location on your SSD. So click on other over here. I will go and navigate to my Kingston SSD. I will go into my virtual machines uh, directory that I've set up over here and we should be good to go. And then finally, let's go and find our ISO image. We're going to be going to other, um, find the ISO file that you have finished downloading and select it. We are going to skip the unattended installation. Okay. On this screen, very important. Um, you are specifying the amount of memory that your virtual machine is going to be using and the number of CPUs. Um, you should be using a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM and I have extra space here. So what I'm going to do is go straight to 16 gigs. Okay. Eight gigs of RAM for your virtual machine is a minimum. If you don't have enough RAM, then find a different way to do this stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe just use the virtual machines that we have on campus. Uh, for the number of CPUs, this doesn't matter quite as much, but I'm going to go with four CPUs. Uh, your these dials should be somewhere in the green, but it has to be a minimum of eight gigs. Let's move on. Uh, the virtual hard disk over here, they are specifying a default of 25 gigabytes. That should be enough for us because we're not going to be installing too much. Um, so I'm going to leave it at the default of 25 gigs. Over here, we should be getting a report basically telling us uh, what we're doing. Click on finish. And now we can click on start.
Okay. I'm going to go and start Linux Mint over here. And I can probably just get rid of these messages. So very important, because we're skipping over sort of the um, guest install, we will have to install this operating system. We don't have anything working yet, okay? We haven't installed the operating system yet. So we have one more step, but we're going to achieve that by sort of entering the sort of uh, live version of Linux Mint. Uh, you can see the first thing on our screen here is an icon that says install Linux Mint. We are going to click on that. Apparently, we're going to sit around and wait for the next step to occur. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through this dialogue here. We're going to be specifying English. Uh, the defaults of English stuff are fine here. Uh, you probably will not need multimedia codecs, but hey, why not? Maybe you're going to be watching YouTube videos um, as you're walking through the labs and stuff. Who knows? Okay, what you see here is this erase disk and install Linux Mint. Remember that this is specifying the 25 gigabyte virtual drive that we've already created. So we're just going to go ahead and accept the defaults. This will tell us exactly what's going on. We'll hit continue. Toronto is correct, so we'll continue. Over here is basically where you're setting up the name of your, the host name for your computer and stuff like that. Um, we can enter our name here. Uh, I recommend that you specify your username as whatever you use for your MySeneca um, and your password. The passwords should match. If they don't match, that's going to be a problem. Um, everything else looks fine here, so let's hit continue. Okay, and the process of copying files and doing all this stuff shouldn't take too long, but we're going to fast forward to the next step. Okay, so you should wait for the process to complete. When you get to this screen over here, you can click on restart now. Please remember, keep in mind, um, until you hit restart now, you don't actually have an operating system installed, right? So you only get a version of Linux Mint that will work and be persistent when you have finished installing it and hit restart now. So we'll do that. Okay, so as long as you have Linux Mint running, your launcher is down here, you should be able to find some stuff make sure that you can find your terminal emulator. There should be one that's installed. And this is the default one that we have here. Should be fine, you can install anything else you like. Okay, if you are working in OPS 445, that means there are a couple things that you need to have on this virtual machine. Number one, we need to have a version of Python 3 installed. So you can do that. Verify that you have this installed by running something like Python 3 dash version. I can see that I have installed Python version 3.12.3. Perfect. We're done. Uh, the other thing you're going to need installed on this is a version of Git. So I'm going to run Git dash dash version. Uh, Git is not found, but can be installed with sudo apt install Git. So let's run that right now. Okay, accept the defaults, let it run. And we are done. So run that git dash dash version one more time just to verify that you have some sort of output that says git version two point something. Uh, the version of git that we're running doesn't really matter, but it should be, you know, a recent version. Okay, next thing we're going to do is open up the browser that we have installed on Linux Mint, which will be Firefox probably, 
and just do a search for VS Code. You will find Visual Studio Code here. This is something that is um, a requirement for OPS 445, let's say. Um, you should not do the course without this tool. Uh, since we are running an Ubuntu or Debian um, version of Linux, uh, we're going to use the DEB over here. We're going to let that install, and then we can go on and learn about how to install it. Um, stand by for this to finish installing. Okay, we're good. So let's show all downloads over here. This is our library. We can probably just open this in the file manager. We see that we have code installed over here. Uh, let's see if we can right click it and open with GDB package installer. And most likely we'll have a button over here to install the package. You will have to install your or enter your pseudo password. Okay, so at this point, we have VS Code installed. We can close this. We should be able to open this up. And if we go to our all applications over here, under programming, we should now see Visual Studio Code. Okay, so there's some initial setup here that you can run through if you want to install a theme. But more important than that for us right now is to install some important extensions. Um, when you launch this for the first time, you will notice along the left-hand panel here are a couple of icons. One of these is a file explorer. One of these is search. One of these is source control. The run and debugger we're going to be using quite a bit. And extensions is over here. The first recommended um, extension that you see for installing is the Python extension. So we're definitely going to want to grab this. Okay. This will also install the PyLance extension alongside. The rest of this stuff you can look into on your own time. Uh, I definitely like the Vim emulation for VS Code because I'm a Vim, I'm a Vim guy, but that's up to you. Okay, so we're done with extensions over here. And we are pretty much done with VS Code for now. Oh, sorry, one other thing to note about this initial setup. You're going to find as you proceed with uh, creating your GitHub account and setting things up so that you can clone repositories from GitHub and push to GitHub, you're going to need a public-private key pair. So why don't we just go and generate that right now? So we'll do SSH keygen. I'm going to say that you should just accept all the defaults for any of this stuff. I don't really bother with a passphrase. And so now when you go into your, you can see this is my home directory. I have a hidden directory called .ssh. If we go into there, we're going to see that there are um, two files here. One is a private key. One is a public key. The public key has the .pub at the end of it. So that's the thing that we're going to be uh, pasting into GitHub. Okay. And I think now we are really are done. So thanks for watching.